Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. Um, this is episode 438. Almost lost track. Um, and today's topic is very simple. Cheating. Why? <laughs> I'll get into that in a second. Let me introduce myself formally for those who haven't seen my broadcast before. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm in fact a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, so I have a lot of stuff to talk about that at different times. But today's topic, or I should say every day I do a topic and I do a talk, themed messages from the masculine to inspire the feminine heart. And today's episode is number 438, I think that's what number I put up, I hope it's right. And the topic today is cheating. Um, and, it, and the second part is why, and there's more to it than that. This conversation, just so you know where it came from, I was just um, interviewed over the phone for an article that someone's writing wanted some ideas about cheating and about signs to look for and what to do about it. And I thought, let me go back to the beginning and provide some insight here and hopefully give you some help if you're dealing with that or if you've dealt with that or if you're tempted by that or if you're just curious about that. <laughs> so you've got plenty of entries to check this out with. So cheating. First of all, this is being... Um, predicated, is the right word? Predicated on the idea of um, monogamy. Because when it comes to polyamory, cheating is a different conversation and it's not my expertise, so I want to leave that one alone, just to be clear. So I'm talking about monogamous relationships and the challenge of cheating, or should say the... What word do I want to use? Hmm. The um, errant behavior of cheating, perhaps, that's the word to use. Bottom line is that cheating is frowned upon, obviously, and it's a negative term because there is a policy in place for monogamous relationships of monogamy. Surprise, surprise. But I want to speak to the deeper stuff because cheating has different levels, flavors, and reasons that I'm not going to say justify the behavior, but may elucidate it a little bit. And then as a secondary piece, can move toward transforming it so it doesn't happen. Because if you're somebody who has been cheated on by different partners more times than you care to count, there's something in you that needs to be looked at. And that's a whole piece about the repeat cycles of relationship. Um, if I move that little piece in now, then we'll come back to cheating in a second. If you, ask, if you have noticed in your past relationships, several relationships in the span of time, where the same patterns show up, there's a big hint there that's something to do with you because you're the only common denominator in those relationships. It ain't them. Well, I mean, it is them, but they are doing it because your role in it causes that. Or, no, excuse me, your role allows that. Let me put it that way. So if you're seeing repeat patterns in past relationships, that's something you need to deal with. And I can help you with that, and I'll tell you about that at the end. So let's get back to the cheating conversation. Well, the cheating monologue. <laughs> this is not too interactive. Personally, for me, cheating is a heinous act. That's a personal feeling, not a, not, a, not a professional feeling. Cheating is betraying trust. Cheating is betraying, um, how do I say this, agreements. And it's also betraying intimacy. And it, I mean, this stuff is pretty obvious. I know it's not like it's rocket, rocket science. But I want to speak to it from this point of view. Why somebody cheats? tells a lot of what's going on. Because cheating is something that happens probably more often than we know. And actually, there's another PS in there. Okay. Before I get to that, <laughs> let me look at the idea of what cheating actually is. Because for some people, cheating is different things. For some people, cheating is sleeping with somebody else. That's a blatant, clear, you know, having an affair, being with somebody else, having a second relationship with that person while not telling you that's cheating. For some people, cheating is the fact that you ogle pictures online on somebody else's social media. You 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 click love on some other person, some somebody else who's attractive that you find attractive on their post, and your partner thinks you're cheating on them. That's that's basically more emotional cheating and psychological cheating. In a way, it's a cheating thing, but here's the thing, and I would say that the why, in some ways, whether it's the physical sexual cheating or the visual um, cyber cheating which is a whole other conversation. 
I'm in fact tied to the similar things. And I'm, and I'm walking this path as I'm looking to see what the news is. So by the way, I'm not saying I know the insight right up the top, but it's coming through. Cheating as a premise, as a behavior, as a role, is usually triggered because the relationship that the person's in, they don't feel fully fulfilled by. And I'm not saying this is, and, and I'll be clear, this is their perspective, not your, not your participation, because you may be fully participating, participating in the relationship and they may cheat because they don't feel fulfilled. Nothing to do with you in that sense. So don't take it personally and don't blame yourself. This is a big part we're talking about. If someone cheats on you, do not blame yourself, please. They're usually cheating because they feel incomplete they feel they want something different, they may feel something else, but they're not willing to confront you with it or even invite you in it. Because here's the thing, I would say half maybe, I'm guessing this is not, not actual research, but I guess half the cheating cases would not happen if there was healthy, honest communication between the partners. Because when you have healthy communication between the partners, you can work a lot of stuff out and maybe get past those assumptions that are being made, which is why some people cheat. If you're working over long hours and your partner's getting fed up because you're never home, if you had a conversation about it, you might change things. Instead, they go and cheat on you because they don't feel they can get what they want from you. That's their stuff again, because they're not willing to communicate as one. Well, it's one of several. Another one is that in bed, you don't you don't love them the way they want to be loved. Now, the, um, I mean, one thing to talk about is the five love languages, which is a key teaching, by the way, if you don't know the five love languages by Gary Chapman. It's a simple book, but powerful teaching about the ways that we don't communicate love. Well, I'm sure there's another book out there somewhere about the five sex languages, meaning that there are ways that people are in bed together in sex that do and don't work. And the challenge with this is that people don't learn how to communicate when it comes to sex. It's a missing piece of people's relationships in a large spectrum of the population where they don't know how to talk to each other during, before and after sex about sex. And I've got friends of mine who coach this stuff. This is not my area, by the way. But I'll offer some vignettes, or not vignettes, some uh, tastes of things that I'm aware of. So not being able to communicate during sex and feeling frustrated because you're not getting what you want or giving you what you want or being connected can tend to tempt somebody to go find it somewhere else. They meet somebody at the office who is on their wavelength and they feel sexually chemistry and they feel such great polarity that when they get together with them, it's so wonderful that they can't tell you about it. Well, the problem is they didn't talk to you about it in the first. So again, the cheating is on them, not on you. But the thing about it is what drove them to it was the fact that they and you didn't have the communication. And again, I'm saying, please don't blame yourself. It's not about that. Understanding that communication in a relationship is two people communicating, dialogue, connection, intimacy, understanding that can obviate the desire for cheating on one person's part. So this is a piece I want to make sure you're aware of. Another part of it is the fact that the person who is cheating is just too, um, well, there's two, two things come up for that one. Okay, one of them is that person who cheats on you is afraid to leave the relationship. That's one. Secondly, that person may be too comfortable in the relationship to want to leave. The thing about this is, and this, this is where I get a bit pissed off, is they have it easy with you. They will go, then they go and cheat on you and keep it from you so they can still maintain the relationship and fake it because they want to stay with you because you provide whatever it is and that makes the relationship amazing. And frankly, you should kick their butt to the curb. That's another, that's a, that's a <laughs> again, not, not professional advice, this is personal feeling, so let's just clear, make sure I'm clear on what level I'm playing on that one, on that piece. So the people cheat, people will not leave, so they will cheat rather than actually, hang on, just, just getting a download. All right, so, let me see if this works. So I'm, this one came through, so I'm just going to see if it lands for you, so bear with me. For a lot of people who cheat, it's because the relationship they're in doesn't fit and they're not willing to do the work to change it to what they want or to leave it for something else. That feels right. That basically if somebody, if they cheat on you, they're not willing to own up to what they want with you and they're not telling you about it and they're not willing to leave to find what they really want. And that's lazy. And it's, and it's disrespectful 
and it's a bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to mention on this broadcast. So when it comes to cheating, there are a lot of pieces. I'm not giving. I'm, I'm clear that I'm just giving you a little um, taster of the whole thing of cheating because there's a big, big spectrum in this area. But I want to give you some insights to think about if you've dealt with this or facing this, or have been tempted yourself. That what is the reason underneath the why the why you're tempted to cheat? And I'm pretty much I would tend to think the reason I might be tempted to cheat is because you're not willing to change the relationship, whether it's your role in the relationship, your partner's role, the way the relationship is formed, or if it's meant to end. Because again, some people, are, uh, some people would rather stay in the relationship and cheat than leave, which is really messed up, as I mentioned. So this, I'm realizing it's funny, I think I may need to send this to the person who was interviewing me because there's some things I come up with now that might be useful to them um, because this article the writing is about cheating. <coughs> And there seems anything else on the radar for this because this, this one is a much bigger topic but I want to just put some 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 of the highlights on the table so you know what they what they mean um, okay let me go back to the article piece because she was she was asking me questions about signs that you may that your partner may be cheating on you is they don't tell you where they've been and they also aren't willing to tell you the truth when you ask them where they've, where they've been up to, where they've been playing, that sort of thing. That is, again, the defense mechanism to avoid being called out. Because when somebody cheats, they're not going to basically tell you about it, obviously, because it's cheating. If they were sleeping around and they were just don't care, they would have told you, or they wouldn't let you, they wouldn't hide it from you. But cheating is a clandestine activity. I mean, when someone cheats a car, they keep it secret. Same is true when they're cheating in a relationship. They're keeping it secret, so you don't know about it. But it's hard to keep that sort of thing secret, which is why you discover by various things, whether it's through evidence, hairs on clothes, lipstick, cologne, perfume, depending on which gender you're playing with, on clothes, missing items, or suddenly new items showing up in their pockets, you know, underwear and stuff like that. There's a lot of symptoms that give things away. But having communication that is open, and I want to come back to this again, is being willing to talk about the relationship including the sex, because a lot of times people cheat is sexual based, although it's not always. Some of it's cheating emotionally based. But realizing what's missing in that relationship, the person seeking elsewhere, may not really be missing, but it may just not be talked about. So if you're in a relationship with somebody, regardless of the cheating conversation, because I'm not saying you're, you're gonna have that risk in your relationship, but if you're in a healthy relationship, and ideally the word is healthy, you are communicating, and if you're not communicating, start. If you are in a relationship you want to maintain and have go deeper, keep the communication lines open and invite conversation, including around sex, maybe especially around sex, so that you have a place where you feel safe in the relationship between you. There's intimacy, openness, honesty, and communication. And those qualities will tend to make the relationship better and reduce the desire to cheat. I'm waiting to see if there's anything missing because it feels like I've covered it in a few different perspectives. Oh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them on the screen. I'll type them in. Um, if I don't catch them in what I'm doing live, I'll respond to them in the replay, of course. Um, and if you know anybody should watch this, perhaps you know something about them, you want to share it with them, feel free. I don't know your friends, so I can't say I know them speak to them directly, but it might be of use. Um, so I think that is I think that is everything I wanted to share about this. There's so much about the whole pain of div of the price to be paid. I'm not getting to that one this time. But I want to give you some pointers, some ideas, some insights, and some suggestions about what it is that can and will um, I don't want to say inspire, but will um, provide an opportunity for that person to cheat. I'll put it that way. I was, I was looking for a way to say it. It was like it was getting a bit like too good, and I want to keep it keep it down fairly low. So I hope it's been of use. There's some key insights I dropped in here. So actually some big truths I dropped in the middle of this broadcast and I hope they were helpful to you. If you've dealt with this and it's a problem for you, if you're having like relationship challenges I mentioned at the beginning of broadcast, um, I have ways I can help. And let me say this couple of things. First of all, um, first of all, second of all, let me, <laughs> hang on, I'm taking my, my, my ducks in a row. Um, one, of the things, one of the things is that 
my service, my focus, my help, my invitation is hope you have more improvement in your relationship life, if you're single especially, to get clarity on where you want to go. Um, I'm also on a, on a rant right now about self-love. I've been promoting and sharing my self-love online um, practice that you can download for yourself. Um, I'll tell you about that in a second too. So there's two things vying for my attention, so I basically just gave you both. So first of all, if you want help in the area of relationship, reach out to me on my, on my website. My website, by the way, is barryselby.com. I'm rebranding some other stuff to make sure it stays at barryselby.com. And you can go to uh, Let's Chat on the left-hand side of the menu to sign up for the discovery session, my gift to you. The self-love is basically barryselby.com forward slash self-love. Or if you're on my website, in the middle of the navigation bar somewhere, it says uh, self-love practice, and you sign up for it right there. Um, those two things should help you. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, the, by the way, this is my daily Facebook Live. This is number 438. That's a lot of them. If you're watching this on YouTube, that's where it ends up, as well as on my podcast, so I'm going to you, tell you where they are. On Facebook, they go onto my business page, where they most easily get found, which is Barry Selby, the author. I then repurpose them, put them onto YouTube, and my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Actually, all my social media is Barry Selby. It's kind of the thing I learned to do a long time ago. But if you go to Barry Selby channel on, on YouTube and click on Messages for the Masculine Playlist, you'll find them all there, all 437 plus this one, 438. And then I've also put the audio version of these onto my podcast, which is on iTunes, and that's uh, Messages from the Masculine. That's how you can find me. My website again is barrysilver.com. Get help if you want help. If you have any comments or questions about this broadcast, please put them below. And um, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. By the way, I do my broadcast at 5 p.m. Pacific time, although Thursday might change, but I'll tell you about that when I get to it. So tune in, um, follow along, and if you have any questions, comments, please either message me, post in, the, post in the video, or reach out and get some help. So thanks for watching, thanks for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.